what's up everybody? Okay, before we get into this episode, which starts in this amount of time, that amount of time, I gotta get through this fast. Starting the day of this day, we are turning on our YouTube membership feature. <laughs> this is really cool because not only by joining are you helping to support us, and I'm not just saying that you're supporting us, like you are truly, truly supporting us, but you are also going to be gaining access to a bunch of really cool stuff. You're gonna get members only live streams, Sander sides emojis, you're gonna get a badge next to your name so that when you comment, we'll know who's commenting. Potential first glimpses at new episodes and series. You're gonna gain access to scripts, to scripted videos after they go up, and maybe even the occasional discount at the store where I sell my things. There's the website right there. You click on it, and it goes to the site. <laughs> Joan told me to say it like that. All it takes is a fiver. And I don't mean a high five, that was misleading. It's five dollars a month, but that's still a good deal. All you have to do is click the blue join button down below this video, or click the first link down in the description below. But if you don't want to do that, or if you can't afford it, don't worry about it, nothing changes for you. You still get all the access to the video content. We still love you and appreciate any support that you do provide. Lastly, for any of you who joined today, the first live stream is going to be happening the day after today, this day, and they're most likely going to be happening the day after a scripted video is posted. And time's up, bye. Larry, quit picking at it. So you're acting like a child. You know, my mother always says you act like a child. I'm always like, no, he's actually really mature. But here you are, acting like a child. I already paid for this, so you're going to do it. Yeah, Dad? Dad, why in the wide world of sports are we back here? I, I thought we made some really good breakthroughs at the last session. Well, the session is where the breakthrough stopped. We started off strong in the playoffs, but then didn't even make the Sweet 15s. Oh, that doesn't even make any sense, Larry. You're a theater kid. Stop trying to talk sports. Yeah, I remember. I'll call Mom later. Yeah, I, uh, listen, I'm about to start a session. Can I call you back? Therapy, I told you. <sighs> yes, Dad, I do need it. I think I need it. <sighs> I don't know, it's just nice having someone to talk to, you know? Kai, I'm just trying to help. And he's a really good doctor. And I think it would do you some good to talk to somebody. Just try it this one time. Thank you. I'll be back in an hour. Put your glasses on, what are you doing? But that's not what I meant. No, n that's not, oh. Yeah, okay, I know, Dad. I, I, yeah, I know. All right, cool, I'll see you guys this weekend. All right, yeah, bye. <sighs> Hello! Nurse. No, uh, my name is Elliot. Oh, my mistake. Wrong room. Uh, I like your new office. Oh, thanks. The last complex kicked me out for being too disruptive or something. I don't believe it. Believe it! Naruto. Yeah, yeah! Oh, you're getting, you're catching on. This is good. Let me get my journal. Sugar, <laughs> spice, huh? and everything nice. These are the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little session. Well, I think we gave this a great second try. Laranold. <clears throat> only made things worse last time. What? I say, I say what now? Sorry, doctor. Larry's in a bit of a sour mood. <clears throat> the salmon bagel he had this morning is not agreeing with him. I think I might have salmonella. You don't get that from salmon? We love the new location. We seldomly leave town or go on vacation. So we decided to dress for the occasion. <laughs> It's only 30 minutes from the last location, but okay. Oh, glad you're back, Elliot. You are? I thought the point was for me not to come back. I wouldn't say that's the point. Lots of well-adjusted people go to therapy, Elliot. But regardless, we still have a lot to work through since, you know, we only had one real session. Right, um, and this one's going to be my last. What? I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, what now? New patient, hello, do you, how do you? <laughs> My name is Dr. Bacchiani and you must be Kai. Reach for the Kai.
in Toy Story. <clears throat> what is it, the ancients? Is it too much? Nothing to do with you. I think you're great, and I'm going to fully commit today, or whatever. Uh, it's the most non-committal way of saying that. Uh, but, um, yeah. Afterward, I'm done. Great googly moogly. Well, okay. If you're sure, then it looks like we've got some ground to cover, so we get a review quickly! Review? Of course, Larry. You're saying we may have taken a wrong turn at Albuquerque, so uh, we should discuss what happened in the last session. Oh, well, sure. Well, we came in because I felt we weren't quite on the same page in the relationship. Then you compared our relationship to some cartoon rocks. Yeah, I did! The Crystal Gems! Good recall, Larry! We talked about how it's okay for me to need reassurance sometimes, and about how we aren't two halves of a whole in our relationship. We're two fully realized separate individuals who chose to fuse, and that's what our biggest strength is. Oh, and then we stole your- HEART! with our charming back and forth. Oh, that you did. I am a fan of witty and high energy conversation. Oh, it's the, it's the office. You hate it. It's new. It's been throwing people off more than when Teen Titans became Teen Titans Go. But, uh, you know, I'm still settling in. It can be a process to get things just the way you want them. All right, go ahead, get to talking. Gotta go fast. Previously on Elliot. You want me to? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we we talked about uh, my relationship with my boyfriend Mitchell and how it might not be the most stable thing on the planet. That's right. And did you two have any progress? Uh, yeah, yeah. We talked about some of it. It's uh. It's, it's hard to bring it up at a good time, you know? Elliot, there are plenty of good times. Peanut butter jelly time, adventure time, 248. That's a particular favorite of mine. Right, but he's just, sometimes he's tired or upset or he's just, I, I don't know. I did bring it up though. Oh, good, and what was discussed exactly? That I was seeing you alone now. And? And that's it. Elliot, as we discussed, you have equal weight and importance in your relationship. Right. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Has anything significant happened since our last meeting? Oh, uh, nothing too significant. <laughs> Larry did have a eensy teensy weensy bean. Just say what you're going to say. I tried to throw Larry a nice evening and he threw me a little fit. Yes, I did. Because it was an overly extravagant fever dream. There may have been a few rose petals, a candelabra, a rented fire pit. Maybe doves were released in the living room, and I may have hired someone to play the harp. I mean... Finding someone in your living room is scary. I almost tackled her. You didn't have any problem with the two masseuses I rented. You leave Sven and Vlad out of this. They were Nordic angels. What was that you said about being kicked out for being disruptive? Elliot, if I've only got you for one more session, let's try to treat Mitchell how Disney treats many of their questionable racist animations of the past and pretend like they don't exist. That seems mean to Mitchell. This is a solo therapy session after all. A Haitian journey not unlike a young avatar once had to make. And I'm here to help you open up all your chakras. Naruto. Wrong show, Elliot. Wrong show. I mean, I said the title. Okay, so I may have gotten an eensy teensy tiddly winksy bit carried away. Working with children has ruined the way you speak. And Larry wasn't the biggest fan of it. Ugh, I just didn't need it. It was sweet of you. It was. And I'm sure it cost a fortune, which I'm not thrilled about. But I don't need to be pampered. I don't need to be taken care of all the time. Whoa! Looks like the blind bandit stepped into the ring. Oh boy, we are off to a rocky start. Oh, you have no idea. All right, Elliot, if memory serves, you're part of a nice little modern Stone Age family. Let's give them a little credit, Doc. They at least made it to the Iron Age, but yeah. Mother, father, sister, brother? Oh, it's like you take notes or something. It's like you've gotten more sarcastic or something. It's like I'm in a better mood this time or something. Speaking of which, last time I said that you were the Jack Jack in your family of Incredibles, but you said you weren't incredible. Why do you think you have that outlook on yourself? Wow. Switch gears real fast. Yep, this session is the Mach 5 and I'm Speed Racer. Let's go! I mean, I don't know. I'm... I'm not... I'm not... Special. And that's where I'm gonna hit the brakes. Elliot, looks like you're in need of your own quest. Hey, Johnny Quest? I appreciate you trying to speak my language, but no. Okay. 
You, like so many people at some point in their lives, must embark on a journey to discover your own self-worth. And I know that's not the easiest thing in the Four Nations, but some of the most arduous journeys make the best stories. Well, mine is a never-ending story. I, I regret doing that. No points for that one. Not a cartoon and meme. Your quest, along with being expedited, has another similarity to Avatar, eh? Neither of you believe you deserve that great inner strength. I know you don't need constant care, Larry. It's just, I'm just, I don't know, trying to contribute more to our relationship. Love, you contribute enough to our relationship by being yourself and by being there for me. Do I, though? See, you know he says these sweet things to me all the time. So why am I so confused as to what to do? It's okay to be confused. Sometimes life can be like a dark tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but if you keep moving, you will come to a better place. <laughs> that sounds suspiciously unoriginal. Is it from a cartoon? Come now, Larry, I am capable of coming up with my own original ideas. However, you are correct in this instance. That is a quote from good old Uncle Iroh! You know, Kai, whenever you're ready, eye contact is perfectly safe. I mean, I'm no co the face dealer or anything. Ah, there I go again with another random cartoon reference. It's funny, I have brought this cartoon up in two other sessions this week. Ko is this really cool malevolent spirit from this animated series, Avatar The Last Airbender. Not that you care about any of this or anything, but you two haven't seen Avatar, have you? Uh, no. I have a severe, highly specific phobia in regards to blue aliens. Oh, except for the adorable stuffed one we took a fancy to at Disney World. Yeah, well then you're in luck because I'm not referring to the James Cameron movie. We're talking the excellent and alien free Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, you're talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, you've seen it? No, but it had really good music in the end credits. I never got home from school in time. Oh, you're killing me. Elliot, you watched Naruto but not Airbender? Come on. I haven't watched Naruto. I know where you got that. So, in the show, there are primarily four nations that correlate with the four elements. Water, earth, fire, and air. Certain people are born with the gift to control, or bend, one of these elements. Long before the events of the show, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. <gasps> Anyway, the show's intro is already a perfectly adequate synopsis of the story, so I'm just going to continue borrowing some of its language. Only the Avatar, one individual who is reincarnated in each generation and can master all four elements, could stop the Fire Nation. But when the world needed him most, him being Aang, the 12-year-old Avatar at the time and soon to be only remaining airbender in the world, he vanished. A hundred years pass and two siblings from the Southern Water Tribe, two siblings from the Northern Water Tribe, Katara and Sokka, discover Aang. Will you go penguin sledding with me? Uh, and although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone, let me tell you. But I believe, not only Katara, that Aang can save the world. Southern. What? I say what now? You were saying something? Katara and Sokka are from the Southern Water Tribe, not the Northern. And Ko doesn't take your face if you make eye contact. He takes it if you... Show emotion. You're right, my mistake. So you're familiar with the show. So you think I'm like this super powerful, multi-element controlling kid, Ong? Uh, it's Ang. Ong? I'm saying Ang. I'm hearing Ong. How are you hearing Ong? It's Ang, not Ong, and don't you... Don't you dare pronounce it like that. But yes, you are like him in that you both doubt yourselves in what you are capable of. See, Aang disappeared because he ran away from the Southern Air Temple where he was raised. Due to the war, he had to start his training far earlier than most avatars, giving up a lot of his childhood. It was a lot to bear. And as the threat of change grew even more overwhelming, namely after overhearing that he would be separated from his friend and mentor, Monkey Yatso, he got scared and ran away. Then he and his air bison opera were caught in a storm that plunged them into the ocean where he went into the Avatar state and encased them both in an iceberg where he resided for the next hundred years. Okay, got it. When he was released, he learned of how much his absence had affected the world. And his training of the other three elements would have to go at a, dare I say, stupidly fast pace. You pretty much mastered airbending and that only took you 112 years. I'm sure you can master three more elements by next summer. The task was an overwhelming undertaking. He doubted himself incredibly. 
but it didn't stop him from trying to bring balance back to the world. Quite frankly, the only one disturbing our balance is you. Larry, you're the last person to criticize anyone about balance. <laughs> Dot, don't start. I'm just saying those who trip in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. It's live in glass houses. I know what I said. You know, Kai, you remind me of a certain character from Avatar. The independent streak, the waiting for all of this to be over, and dare I say, the attitude. I don't have an attitude. I just don't need this. I can solve my own problems. Plus, I wouldn't even be here if I hadn't been forced. So if you don't mind, or if you do, I don't care. I'm gonna reclaim the hour that was stolen from me and use it to nap. People went on therapy couches, right? Ah. Uh. So this is your first time in therapy. Nothing between Dot and I has changed, or at least I haven't changed. So I don't think we need the avatar as much as you think we do. See, Kai, this behavior reminds me of a young Sokka's initial impression of Aang. Sokka lived his life preparing for a war with the Fire Nation. When Aang showed up, the supposed avatar, Sokka felt like Aang was ill-equipped to solve the modern world's problems. We can't fight firebenders with fun. How could he solve something he didn't know the first thing about? Is that how you feel about me? You're not the avatar. No. No, I'm not. Uh, if anything, I think I would be a waterbender. And I'm not Sokka. Larry, you and Sokka do have a lot in common, let me tell you. Water tribe. Um, not if he's from a water tribe. Larry's not much of a swimmer. You know what I like about Sokka? What? F***ing nothing. Oh? Write that down. Sokka is smart and a capable warrior. I've changed my mind. Let's hear him out, Don. But unlike everyone else in his group, he can't bend an element. So whenever he has the opportunity, he leaps at the chance to prove himself. Even though he doesn't have their natural bending talents, he does actually make a difference with his ingenuity. Okay, I guess I am pretty good. However, when he feels useless in any given circumstance, he will lash out. He can be a bit stubborn and set in his ways. Also, so he had a pretty good sense of humor. I'll agree. I'm pretty funny. But I'm not stubborn. Uh, see? Classic Sokka. You, you're a classic Sokka! Mm, I'd say I'm more like Aang with a Pancho Boomy. These names mean nothing to me. Boomy, Saki. Sokka. I'll sock you up. Larry, don't threaten violence. You can't fight. You're a thespian. It's okay, Larry. No character I can name would be a perfect parallel to your life and your situation. There are many elements of many different characters we can all relate to. For example, in the last session when you mentioned that Dot was suffocating you, it reminded me of my footwear-free fave. I don't remember saying that at all. I wouldn't say that. Did I say that? So you don't remember? Perhaps that's an example of you lashing out as a defense mechanism? I don't know. Sokka responds the same way when he feels that people are pointing out his inadequacies. Maybe Dot admitting that she felt the disconnect is making you feel like there is something wrong with you, thus leading to this behavior? I don't know. I really don't. But sheesh. You would have thought I would have caught on to something like this a while ago. Okay, but... What I'm going through is a little bit more than self-doubt. You're probably right. But like Aang, you have support, right? Uh, what about your sister? Oh, yeah. No, she's... She's always been there for me. Um, she's... She's going off to college soon. Is that why you want these sessions to end? What? Well, the Woodstock to your Snoopy is leaving. So do you feel that you have to quickly become independent before that time comes? I, I don't know, I didn't think about that. Maybe. That'd be funny though, because she's the only one in my family that thought me going to therapy was a good thing. Oh, what about the rest of your family? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know, I don't really talk about it with my brother, but um, my mom, she doesn't love it. It offends her, I guess. Like She feels like this is my way of Telling her she did something wrong. Good grief. And your dad? <sighs> Do you see that, Pakani? Do you see this? Take note of that, that's important. Uh, I can't see your pupils, that's not good. He doesn't think I need it. He, he thinks I'm fine, that I, I don't have real problems. Oh, sure. And there is no war in Ba Sing Se, you know what I mean? I don't. I don't know what you mean. Avatar reference about a conspiracy involving the denial of an unpleasant truth in an effort to keep the peace. Oh, okay, sure. Um, yeah, he's always pointed to my brother as an example, you know, like, your brother wouldn't do that, or 
Your brother wouldn't paint his nails like that. And it's like, okay, you got me, Dad. All I've ever wanted in my miserable life was to be more like Chad. His name is Chad. It's funny, like, I, I, uh... I was the one who ended up with the legacy name, even though I'm not the firstborn. Oh, your dad's name is Elliot, too? Uh, no, um... Elliot is my preferred name. It was my middle name. My parents named me... Herbert Jr. Ah, that's right. That was in your paperwork. I would have gone with Elliot, too. Now, you two have been together for 15 years, correct? That's right! You have a great memory. Thank you! I also have a handy dandy notebook. Ah. Funny enough, Sokka was 15 when his whole adventure began, but tell me about your adventure. How did you two love birds first meet? I don't know if I can recall. I remember it was a crisp autumn day. I was the director of a bold and daring version of Hamlet where no one dies. No one died in your version of Hamlet? It was the family friendly version. Oh, it was a great show. I had just moved to town and went immediately to join the local theater community. I volunteered to become Larry's stage manager because, well, I admired his drive to see this production through and just how much he had invested himself into the show. Not to mention, I admired his roguishly handsome face. Okay, all right. She was a perfect stage manager. Attentive, consistent, and stunningly attractive. Um, guys, guys, I'm still over here. <clears throat> <clears throat> I haven't had a stage manager since that cared about a production so much. It was strange not needing to have my hands in everything all the time. I, for once, was able to trust someone else to do the job. Oh, that is cuter than a saber-toothed moose lion cub. Now, Larry, you had mentioned that Dot was the first person you could trust to do the job. Were there issues before? Well, no one else would treat the situation like she would. She'd help and be attentive, not only to my needs, but to those of the cast. She had a much lighter hand than mine. <laughs> Normally, if there was a problem, I wouldn't dwell on it. I would solve it then and there. No going around it, no clever solutions. I'd face the problem head on and get it solved. Dot's methods were admittedly more popular than mine. Golly, are you sure that you haven't watched this show before? Because you're... you're practically quoting it. No! Animation makes me queasy. Pop-Pop never let me watch cartoons. Now, I can barely stomach them. Larry the Salmon! Oh, 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 I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but I recommend you give animation another shot. At, at least for this show. If you deal with things the way you say you do, then I believe you might really identify with a certain runway. You know who I'm like? Saka? No, I'll tell you who I'm like. Toph! I am the greatest earthbender in the world! Wow, Kai, you're pretty tough on Saka. Holy shit. Sorry, my apologies for the pun. Let's talk Toph Beifong. What do you like about her? Who is Toph? Toph is an earthbending master. I don't know, she's bad she's metal as hell. Take your pick. She's vocal about her opinions and faces every problem head on. Especially if it's a problem people tell her she can't handle on her own. People see me and think I'm weak. They want to take care of me, but I can take care of myself by myself. That does sound like you. Well, oh, and no one knows you better than your bae. Fong, do kids still say bae? Oh, <laughs> I've been a teacher for years, and I just stopped trying to keep up. So can you tell me why, out of all the characters, Toph takes the title belt? <laughs> like, when representing you, Toph's the top choice? Maybe it's because Toph triumphs over tough tasks and troublesome tragedy. I'm getting carried away. Please go on. Toph doesn't take anything lying down. She has her own disability, but she never lets it get in the way. Even though I was born blind, I've never had a problem seeing. I see with earthbending. It's kind of like seeing with my feet. Hmm. She takes what people think is weakness, and she turns it into strength. Oh, that's right. I remember seeing in your paperwork, you deal with a disability yourself? Yeah, but you've probably never heard of it. Try me. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. You're right. I have not heard of that one. I am sorry. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, don't sweat it, though. You're not alone in your ignorance. Oh, good. It's a connective tissue disorder. It creates a lot of joint pain, among other things, and I was diagnosed officially about two years ago, but I've always known that something was up. You know, I wasn't normal. I can never really jump or climb or run like other people my age. Well, that must have made things pretty difficult growing up. Yeah, I used to hang out with friends and just watch them doing stuff that normal kids do. Like climbing trees or climbing 
fences, whatever able-bodied kids do. And I would just know that I probably shouldn't do that, you know, or I'd get hurt. So I'd just watch them have fun. People often treated me like someone that needed to be taken care of, and I did not care for that shit. So you often found yourself in a position similar to Toph. Right. Some might even say a position similar to Sokka as well. What? He felt out of place at times because for most of the journey, his group consisted entirely of benders. It made him feel less than. Each of you is so amazing and so special, and I'm not. I'm just the guy in the group who's regular. Is that something you can relate to? As a matter of fact, it's not! Oh, uh, you don't know me! Stop trying to read me! Lord. You're not a psychic, you're not a woo, more like Uncle Abu! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Coming in hot there! I've heard of Agni Kai, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Been waiting to make that joke. So you don't feel out of place among your friends? Nope. They're great. I'm great. Just a bunch of great people skating around being great. Oh, you skate. Well, uh, I mean, they skate more than I do. I mean, I, I can skate. It's just, in order to feel more comfortable, I have to wear protective gear and stuff. Mm. And it all makes me look pretty dorky, so I'd rather not, which is fine. I just chill while they do their thing. It's no big deal. Do you feel like you might be prioritizing appearances over having a good time with your friends? Oh my god. No, no, uh, no, we're not doing this. You sound just like Lauren. Lauren? Who is that person, man? Hey guys, hey, welcome. This is Enrique's Exquisite Eatery. Uh, come on down, the food's delicious. Where is it? I don't know, you gotta find it. We gotta swing. Who is that person, man? My girlfriend. I'm Lauren. She's the one who dragged me here. She's constantly in my face saying, That's stupid! If they don't like you the way you are, then they don't deserve you! Nobody cares how you look! And blah blah blah! Sunshine and rainbows! Hmm. Sounds like you don't like her. I do, I'm just being an ass. Well, Elliot, from what you've told me, you have even more in common with the little airbender than I thought. From what I told you? Well, many of Aang's initial struggles are in his fear that this life was never meant for him. I already told you how they forced his training years before he was ready, and how his disappearance led to the Fire Nation taking over much of the world. Circumstances like these would easily make someone feel guilty and unsuitable for some sort of great destiny. I still don't see how... When Katara and Sokka release him, Katara asks Aang about the Avatar. Aang lies and says, I didn't know him. I mean, I knew people that knew him. You see, Aang had developed somewhat of an imposter syndrome, saying to the world, look, you got the wrong guy. Ellie, would it be fair to say that you may not feel suited to carry your father's name? I... Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's not the only reason why I don't like the name, but uh, the whole legacy thing is definitely uncomfortable. So I have imposter syndrome? It may be part of the issue. Oh, well, great. Uh, that doesn't help me get any better. Well, sure it does. Because I can say, see that? I told you I'm not a Herbert. My therapist that you don't approve of said so. No, because you can't fix a problem if you don't know where to look. One of the things about imposter syndrome is not giving yourself credit for the accomplishments and progress you've made. In book one, episode 12, The Storm, Aang gets confronted by a fisherman who calls him out. The Avatar disappeared for a hundred years. You turned your back on the world. Aang chooses to believe these words because they are what he believes about himself. He neglects the facts that he's already been journeying, training and waterbending and helping people along the way. Thank you, Avatar. You are here trying to improve yourself. You have a sister who loves you for who you are and a supportive friend who advised you to come see me in the first place. And I'm sure I'm only scratching the surface. Like Aang who eventually overcomes his self-doubt to save that same fisherman. You owe this boy an apology. You'll overcome yours and progress will become apparent. That'd be the day. It's just hard to believe that when other people don't, doesn't, when, I'm, when other people don't see it that way. I'm sorry, I can't, I don't. With the, I don't, I can't with words. Dot, you strike me as having the true blue spirit of Katara. You can't knock me down! Isn't that a Japanese sword? No, nope, but she's just as sharp! <laughs> Alright, Katara is kind and compassionate. When she was very young, she tragically lost her mother, so she was forced to grow up fast. She quickly took on a maternal role in her village, 
and in her relationships. She's a waterbender too, the only one from her village. Even though female waterbenders were considered to be strictly healers in the northern water tribe, Katara displayed her aptitude and proved that she was worthy to be trained to become an amazing warrior and a waterbending master. That said, she didn't give up on being a healer. She just knew that she had the ability to become more than just what was expected of her. Gee, Manetti, you think I'm like that? Who wouldn't? You said yourself you were forced into a maternal role, but you took it all in stride. And you're clearly adaptable to different situations, a la your moving to town and meeting Larry story. You quickly put yourself out there and showed how capable you were. Couldn't agree more. Love, you're an amazing woman. <sighs> you're both taking to the relationship similarly to how Toph and Katara took to teaching Aang earthbending and waterbending respectively. When Toph first tried to teach Aang earthbending, it proved to be pretty difficult for Aang. Toph's rigid and strict style of teaching was the opposite of Katara's positive and nurturing approach. Both needed to learn from each other on how to teach Aang in the best possible way, because no one way is correct. Although Katara's way is preferred by Aang at first, Toph's way is the one that leads Aang to face adversity and stand his ground. Toph learns to soften up, and Katara learns to mother the group less as the story goes on. Both of Yue need to learn how to best teach your Aang. Yue was Sokka's girlfriend, who he lost. She turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. Maybe Lauren's right, that your friends won't judge you for how you look. But how would she know? She doesn't know my friends. Eh, I'm inclined to believe her. I mean, if Rocket Power taught me anything about skateboarders, it's that they value friendship above all else. I don't know. In my experience, it's better to just blend in sometimes. I understand, Kai. Standing out can be pretty scary. Why did Lauren force you to come here? There must be something that she was concerned about. She believes I need to open up more about myself. Hmm. And you disagree? There's parts of myself that people don't need to know. Well, it seems like Lauren believes their traits worth sharing. I don't know. I don't want anyone to think I'm like a geek or something. Whoa! Uh, geeks are awesome. Um, Not in my experience. My uh, geeky interests aren't really thought of as cool. Like what? Enjoying cartoons? Yeah. And I play video games. Kind of a lot. I don't think there's anything weird about that. No, you don't get it. Gaming is something I could actually do well, so I became very good. Mm. I learned to main Fox and- uh, Hang on, what main Fox are we talking about here? Robin Hood, Swiper Todd, Nick Wilde, the Fantastic Mr. Fox, or the Foxes on my Soxes? <sighs> you, you are a lot. A lot to love. Fox is from this game, Super Smash Bros. Well, not originally, but that's the game I'm talking about. Huh. I got really good as him and it's stupid, but I kind of studied the best players I could find online to get even better. And then I started entering tournaments and winning. Wow! Which led to me getting into other games. Like, I now regularly win prizes like loot boxes by placing first in Overwatch tournaments on Battlefy. Boy, this must be how others feel when I talk about cartoons they haven't seen. And that's why I don't bring it up. No one cares about my stupid bullshit. No, I didn't say that. Just because I'm not familiar with your passions doesn't mean your passions are stupid. They aren't stupid to Lauren, and if your friends are truly friends, your passions won't be stupid to them either. I don't know. I can see why you relate to Toph. Like her, you didn't let your circumstances stop you. You may not have snuck out at night to learn the ancient earthbending practices of the Badger Moles, but you learned tricks and techniques from online sources to hone your craft and have become one of the most fearsome competitors in specialized competitions. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. You know, there is another person who I think you may be able to relate to who we also learned about in that Storm episode. Perhaps because Aang and this person have similar journeys with self-worth. Zuko. And this isn't Danny Zuko from Greece. No, it's not. Please, we're... We are talking about cartoons, this is serious. Zuko is one of the main antagonists for a good portion of the show. His sole mission, right from episode one, being to capture the Avatar for the sake of the Fire Nation. And he is always grumpy. Why don't you enjoy a cup of calming jasmine tea? I don't need any calming tea! Oh, wow, I'm feeling so good about myself with this comparison. Just hang on a Momo. Over the episodes, it becomes clear that Zuko is after the Avatar for more than just the sake of the Fire Nation. There are moments where Zuko withholds information from and even sabotages the efforts of other members of the Fire Nation. Also, he can be the one to hand the Avatar over to his father. 
Fire Lord Ozai and regain his honor. Regain his honor? Yeah, he lost it after speaking out of turn in a meeting, stating that sacrificing a whole Fire Nation troop as a simple distraction in a battle plan was not a good idea. What an offense, am I right? His father punished him by, spoiler alert, facing off against him in combat, burning and permanently scarring his face, and banishing him from the kingdom until he returned home with the Avatar. That, uh... Sounds like a bad dad. That sounds like an understatement. I haven't seen the show. How bad did he burn him? Bad. From then onward, Zuko became this embittered soul, leading a crew in search of the Avatar and becoming an enemy of Aang's. That doesn't sound very fair. It doesn't, does it? If only Zuko realized sooner that his worth did not stem from what his father thought of him, or wasn't diminished by his father's constant praising of his sister Azula. If only he learned to trust the words of his loving mother who was no longer in his life, and the support of his wise uncle Iroh who always believed in him. It maybe could have saved him a lot of internal struggle. Did it get better for him? Oh, it did. Though he didn't get there alone. As Iroh once said, While it is always best to believe in oneself, a little help from others can be a great blessing. Even though he had to fall even more in his father's eyes, he trusted his uncle and started a new path for himself. A decision that was so revolutionary, he literally experienced a fever and a metamorphosis of sorts. Even after this, there were backward steps for him, but he ultimately changed for the better. Tezuko, who knew after all those times he tried to snuff us out, today he'd be our hero. Hear, hear! So he never proved himself to his dad? Well, never truly, but I mean, the Fire Lord's not... <laughs> A great guy, so it's probably for the best. I know your father isn't the Fire Lord, but Zuko had to be good enough for himself. He didn't need to prove himself to anyone else, and in the end, the people who truly loved him were there through it all. Wow, people who truly loved him can't relate. <sighs> Elliot, why didn't you have a real talk with your boyfriend Mitchell? Kai. As much as I see Toph within you, why do you have this aversion to identifying with Sokka? Um, because he's annoying and he can't do anything. Oh, what? I'm not good enough to kidnap? Oh, Kai, you can't mean that. You've watched the show. You know how he... He can't even bend like the others. You know, bending, the whole reason you watch the show. Uh, He's known for his great ideas, but Aang, Katara, and Toph are needed to make his ideas work. Not to mention the others have had great ideas too. Better than Sokka's in some instances. He relies on others, he's not taken seriously, and he's a whiny baby! Shit's weak, Bakani! Shit's weak! Well, Sokka- Shit's weak! Sokka may not be able to bend like his friends, but when it came down to it, he relied on his instincts. Like when Jet came along and he knew that guy was sketchy, so Sokka ended up saving an entire town. His lack of bending ability forced him to adapt and develop a resourceful nature that we don't see in a lot of bending characters. It's a strength in its own right. So I'm Sokka because I'm less than. I didn't say that. Well, that's what I'm hearing. Look, in my group of friends, I'm already pretty different, and I don't just mean the EDS. I'm not about to add on that I'm obsessed with video games that I have to wear f***ing finger braces to play, which, mind you, I used to get made fun of all the time for in school. <laughs> yeah, I'm a weirdo. Now you know. But that doesn't need to be anyone else's business. Kai, your feelings are completely valid. I do want to stress that there is an important distinction between feeling less than and actually being less than, which you definitely aren't. Your differences are what make you so spectacular as an individual. Both Sokka and Toph felt different. They both had to begin somewhere and worked to utilize their best traits to kick butt in their own ways. Although violence is Never the answer. Yeah, I guess Sokka did have some fine moments. I mean, he did have that meteor sword. <gasps> right? That thing was the coolest! So, I need to learn how to be more flexible. And I need to learn to be more independent. But can I? How do I stop being such a... mom? Oh. It's clear that my doting attitude towards Larry, paired with worrying about everything all the time, is not helping anyone. 
I'm just smothering and annoying. No, my sweet turtle dove. You could never annoy me. The worst you could do is make me need a nap. Turtle duck, you have seen the show. I said turtle dove. Sure, Larry. Your secret's safe with me. Dot, mothers don't have a monopoly on those traits and you don't necessarily need to stop exhibiting them. There's nothing wrong with showing that you care about Larry. Instead of focusing on getting rid of your nurturing side, you need to work on building your independent side. It's duality. Like with the Kyoshi Warriors in episode four of book one. Book one. I thought this was a cartoon show. The Kyoshi Warriors are a team of elite fighters and they're all women. Sokka at one point apologizes to Suki, the leader of the warriors, for treating her like a girl when he should have been treating her like a warrior. Suki's response? I am a warrior. But I'm a girl, too. She's not one or the other, she's both. And you can learn to balance the different aspects of your personality, too. You just have to realize that there isn't any side of you that is lesser than any other. This is actually something Larry appears to do quite well. Did you just compliment my balance? Last session I gathered that you weathered the murky, dismal, social and emotional pressure your grandfather put on you and came out of it fully embracing your sexual identity and shining for all to see! Is that right? I guess that's true. I mean, I guess I was really just allowing myself to be myself more than anything. Hmm, self-acceptance is even more satisfying than cactus juice. It'll quench ya! Toph also experienced some dissonance between who she truly was and who her caretakers thought she was. She hated the way she was constantly coddled growing up and interpreted it as people believing she was incapable of taking care of herself. You aren't really coddled. Quite the opposite. But you each had a personal journey to trek in order to arrive at the place where you could both be your authentic selves. Your independence and commitment to self-reliance is admirable. Thank you. <laughs> I thought we were pretending like Mitchell didn't exist. Yeah, but he does exist. Final session, I'd like to work through as much as possible. Why not try to have an open discussion about some of the anxiety you feel in your relationship and how he might be able to help you? I... There's no winning. I... Like, like, he doesn't want to go to therapy because he doesn't see the point. But then he turns around and gets mad at me for going without him. And, and now, now he can't see you with me anymore. I've tried bringing things up. And he's never ready. There's never a good time. It, it doesn't do anyone any good. It doesn't do me any good. Mm-hmm. Well, Zuko had to learn to deal with his sister Azula for a similar reason. She had mastered the art of lightning generation. The cold-blooded firebending. But lightning is hot. That it is, Elliot. That it is. Zuko was taught that the only way to deal with lightning was by redirecting it away. It was still dangerous to deal with such energy, but it was the only way to take it head on and potentially avoid getting hurt. That may be something you have to do with Mitchell or any family member when dealing with important things that must be discussed. Redirecting their negative energy away from you and not letting it hurt you in confrontation. <sighs> I know, easier said than done, but you'll get there in scooby dooby doo time. Just remember, Larry, that you don't need to be completely self-sufficient in order to prove your independence. Your personal strength is not devalued when you let someone else do nice things for you. I know that. I guess it's just hard for me to understand the need for grand gestures. You're my best friend, Dot. You don't need to do anything more than just be around me the way you always are. Wish I knew why that wasn't enough for me. Hmm. Have you two ever heard of the five love languages? I think so. What defines how different people express love, right? Exactly. Everyone communicates love to others differently, but the idea of the love languages is that all forms expressions of love can take can be summed up into these five languages. Words of affirmation, quality time, gift giving, acts of service, and physical touch. We already use all of those. Languages. <clears throat> Me.
maybe so. But typically, people have one primary language that they favor over the others or that they respond to best. Well, hello. Much like the Avatar had to master all four elements, maybe it's time that you two learn to master and utilize each other's primary languages. Dot, you really seem to enjoy doing favors for other people. Might acts of service also be the language that speaks to you best? I don't know. Maybe. It is nice to put effort into doing something nice for someone you love. And... And? For that someone to show their appreciation through more than just words. Hmm. And Larry, you've expressed several times that the method of support that you favor is quality time. Yeah. I mean it when I say that that's all I need from Dot. You both need to find a middle ground when it comes to communicating your love. You need compromise. How do we do that? Well, it entails working on and practicing the love language that speaks to your partner best. It may take a while, but you'll get there in yabba dabba do time. However, if this still seems like a daunting task, it may be best to look at the Cave of Two Lovers. Is that like a... Is that like a vacation spot or...? I'm saying that you and Dot will only get over your mountain of issues by working together to come up with your solution. Much like Katara and Aang did when faced with the Cave of Two Lovers in Episode 2 of Book 2, a lot of the time there isn't going to be an obvious path that leads you to all the right answers. Sometimes it's good to take the leap of faith, let the fire burn out, and let love lead the way. The path will reveal itself to you. Trust yourselves. Trust in the idea that you two can work things out as long as you're working together. Even if you're lost, you can't lose the love because it's in your heart. the day, Kai, whichever character makes you feel like you can conquer the world is a great role model. Except maybe Azula, or Ozai, or Sozin, or Chen the Conqueror, or- So none of the people who actually tried to conquer the world. Yeah. If you see yourself as tough, I'm all for it. Just don't forget that any similarities to Sokka you may see in yourself aren't as bad as you think. It's okay to have a little of both. Just keep in mind Uncle Iroh's lesson to Zuko about the different nations and the natures of their people. Each nation had specific strengths, endurance, passion, community, and inner peace. It was important to draw wisdom from different places. If we take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole. Ah, I like that part too. Although, just a bit of constructive criticism. If you're going to use a metaphor for embracing all parts of ourselves, a cleaner example would definitely be the chakras the Guru Pathic teaches Aang about in Book 2, Episode 19. Ah yes, the seven chakras. Dealing with survival, pleasure, willpower, love, truth, insight, and pure cosmic energy. Each of them blocked respectively by fear, guilt, shame, grief, lies, illusion, and earthly attachments. And if we worked on each of those issues within ourselves, maybe short of letting go of supportive loved ones in our lives, it absolutely could help us feel better with our self-work. Well done, Kai! Woogity 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 woogity. What was that? What are you doing? Rocket power? No? Never mind. I'd say for you, focus on that fear and shame you seem to be harboring. Take steps to embrace your passions. Your friends and Lauren will appreciate it. Self-improvement can be a difficult journey, but we can all get there. In Blue Scud Do, we can do time. Sometimes I try to switch things up in order to avoid repeating material. Yeah, they're not all winners. Look, Elliot, Uncle Iroh, who was a firebender, was able to teach Zuko how to redirect lightning only because he had previously studied waterbenders and their techniques. Think of the four elements as different parts of yourself. Perhaps by working on other elements within yourself, you will hone the technique of redirecting negative energy as well as further developing your self-worth. Yeah, but it's like you said, you know, easier said than done. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to start. Then I'll leave you with this, Elliot. One of Aang's best friends, an earthbender king named Bumi, explains to him the concept of Jing. Fighting is positive Jing, and retreating is negative Jing. But then Bumi reveals a third kind, neutral Jing. This consists of doing neither, and waiting for the opportune moment to strike. Where are you, where are you going with this? Stay with me. You're right, Elliot. 
If you're feeling terrible about yourself, I can't just tell you to start thinking you're amazing or beautiful, but we can start working in the neutral. Whenever these doubts and insecurities pop up, perhaps you can try thinking, maybe it's possible that I'm not as worthless as I think I am. These bridge thoughts are examples of living in the neutral. It's in the neutral that we are able to change. And by taking the time to be in that state, perhaps the healthiest perspective will find you. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Thanks again for your help, doctor. Hopefully Larry and I can apply what we've learned today and work on understanding each other better. I have the utmost confidence you will. You two are smart, motivated people who really seem to value each other as individuals and in your relationship. Remember, love is brightest in the dark. It's great that you two both came into the last session and this one, not only to work out your issues, but also you're both so darn funny. <laughs> I mean, you always have me in stitches. <laughs> oh, oh, Doc, doing all your cartoon references. <laughs> Doc, let's go. Oh, Larry the Salmon! We're through it. I really appreciated your openness today, Kai. Sincerely. Maybe we can set up another time to talk? Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Let me think about it. No pressure. I hope to hear from you. Also, for the record, I knew Katara and Sokka were from the Southern Water Tribe. It was a ploy to get you to open up. Mm-hmm. Sure it was. It was. I definitely knew it. I'm a sly trickster like that. Look, this is what I was writing when you were correcting me. It, uh... Sure thing, Bagani! Okay, well, I went into a lot of detail about complicated plot lines, but I don't know which pole the main characters are from. Sure, that's believable. I guess. I did know it! <sighs> Thanks, Dr. Bagani. For everything. Of course, Elliot. And remember, even though most people aren't the Avatar, the goal is to try to be more like the Avatar. In that, similar to how the Avatar brings balance to the world, we must work to bring balance to ourselves. Okay. So I guess, um... That's all, folks. That was terrible. And also incorrect. I'll see you at the next appointment. Really? But I thought... While it is always best to believe in oneself, a little help from others can be a great... thing. It's, uh... It's blessing. Right, yeah. Bye. Cool! Who's my next client? Uh, Kai. Like, acne Kai. Gotta make a joke about that. Oh, oh, yeah. I just want to let you know that for this video, we had the help of Katie Morton. Hi, everybody. I am a licensed therapist, and I have a mental health channel on YouTube where I talk about all yes. things mental health. The links for her channel are in the description. They're awesome. So thank you so much, Katie. Of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, check this out. Got my eye on you. What a tribe. Let us leave. Let us leave. Drink cactus juice. It'll, It'll quench you. Nothing's quenchy. It's the quenchiest. <laughs> I look like a beached whale. <laughs>